Since founded in a dorm room at Harvard in 2004, Facebook has become the largest social network in the world with over 1 billion users. You can find Facebook users of every demographic, and every day, more and more people are using the social network to share massive amounts of content with their family, friends, and coworkers. They're interacting with old and new connections, as well as following their favorite brands, products, and businesses. People are reading their news, asking questions, sharing their experiences, and resharing content that is meaningful to them. With the rollout of Pages, Facebook has become instrumental to businesses, as more of them are using Pages to maximize their marketing value and customer engagement. Facebook Pages allow brands to share photos, videos, links, and updates about their products or services, as well as lifestyle content with their customers. Business pages can also be used to showcase your company culture and history to create a deeper connection. Users are able to comment, like, and reshare content from a brand's Facebook page, allowing them to amplify your content with their networks. You can keep your business top of mind through active updates. When you post an update, it appears in the news feed of people who have liked your page, providing your customers with the opportunity to engage with your business. Facebook has also developed a robust advertising platform that allows your ads and posts to show up in the ad section or news feeds of those who aren't yet fans of your business, letting you amplify your reach. You can even target specific demographics so your message reaches the audience that is right for you. Facebook is one of the most downloaded mobile apps, so it's crucial for you to understand how your page looks on a mobile device. With Facebook Mobile, users are able to update their status, browse their news feeds, check into places, and browse pages, all from their smartphones. This means that your updates, content, and ads have a huge opportunity to reach a broader audience. Facebook can help businesses achieve their goals by finding new customers, boosting traffic and sales, and connecting more closely with their community. To become the number one largest social media platform, Facebook also have their own vision and mission that people in their company need to follow. There are three vision statements made by Facebook, which are stay connected with friends and family, discover what is going on in the world, also share and express what matters to the individual. For the mission statement, Facebook stated that they exist to give people the power to share and make the world more open and connected. Now, I will explain on the first stage of strategy formulation analytical framework. The first stage is input stage, consists of three matrices, which are external factor evaluation EFE metric, internal factor evaluation IFE metric, and competitive profile metric CPM. External factor evaluation EFE metric is the first metric in input stage. The process in developing EFE metric started with least key external factors, which are opportunities and threats. The second step is assign each factor a weight range from 0.0, .0 not important, to 1.0, very important, that will result to total weight of 1. Next, assign each factor a response rating range from 4 to 1. 1 is poor, 2 is average, 3 above average, 4 superior. After that, multiply each factor's weight by its rating to determine a weighted score. Lastly, Sum the weighted score for each variable to determine the total weighted score. Highest is 4, lowest is 1, average is 2.5. For our key study Facebook, we have made an industry analysis on the external factor evaluation EFE metric by listing the key external factors as shown. From the table, we can conclude that the most important factors that lead to Facebook success are on their investment in data protection and users' privacy protection, also the limitation of each to use Facebook as indicated by the 0.17 weight for both. After consider all these factors in EFE metric, we summarize that the total weighted score to be 3.19 considered as high rating. It shows that Facebook is responding in an outstanding way to existing opportunities and threats in its industry. It means that Facebook strategies have taken advantage 
on the existing opportunities and minimize the potential external threats to the company. Now, we move to second metric in input stage, which is internal factor evaluation IFE metric. The process in developing IFE metric started with least key internal factors, which are strengths and weaknesses. Then, assign each factor a weight range from 0.0, .0 not important, to 1.0, very important, until you get total weight of 1. Next, assign each factor a rating range from 4 to 1. 1 is major weakness, 2 is minor weakness, 3 is minor strength, 4 is major strength. After that, multiply each factor weight by its rating to determine the weighted score. Lastly, sum the weighted score for each variable to determine the total weighted score. Highest is 4, lowest is 1, average is 2.5. For internal factor evaluation IFE metric, we have made an industry analysis by listing the key internal factors as shown. From the table shown, we can conclude that the most important factors that lead to Facebook success are on the amount of active users that use their platform in day-to-day -day activities, also on the needs and behaviors of users that fulfill by Facebook. It shows that these two factors have a higher weight by 0 0.20. As a final conclusion, with the total weighted score of 3.21 of IFA metric, it indicates that Facebook have strong internal position in the industries. The last metric in input stage is competitive profile metric CPM. The process in developing CPM started with least critical success factors, which includes external and internal factors. After that, assign each factor a weight range from 0.0, .0 not important, to 1.0, very important, until it results to total weight of 1. Next, assign each factor a rating range from 4 to 1, 1 is major weakness, 2 is minor weakness, 3 is minor strength, 4 is major strength. Then, multiply each factor's weight by its rating to determine a weighted score. Lastly, sum the weighted score for each variable to determine the total weighted score. Higher is 4, lowest is 1, average is 2.5. We have made an industry analysis on the competitive profile metric CPM by listing the critical success factors as shown. From the table shown, we can summarize that the two most important factors to being successful in the industries are personal branding and strong online presence as indicated by 0.20. However, to make Facebook different from other competitors by its rating in every critical success factor. Therefore, as a conclusion, it shows that Facebook is more strongest than other competitors by total weighted score of 3.54 and it shows that the weakest is Instagram with 2.86 only. Since we have discussed about the input stage, let's move on to the next stage which is matching stage. The matching stage of the strategy formulation framework consists of 5 techniques that use the information from the input stage to match external opportunities and threats plus internal strengths and weaknesses. Those 5 techniques are the SWOT matrix, the SPACE matrix, the BCG matrix, the IE matrix and the GRAND strategy matrix. First and foremost, we are going to discuss on the first matrix, which is the SWOT matrix. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities and Threats. In SWOT matrix, there are four types of strategies, which are Strength Opportunities, Weakness Opportunities, Strength Threats, and Weakness Threats. The first strategy is Strength Opportunity Strategies, or to be known as SO Strategy. 
SO strategy is a strategy that uses firms' internal strengths to take advantage of external opportunities. Firstly, the strength of the Facebook is excellent user experience, while the opportunity is investment in data protection and users' privacy protection. Thus, both of strength and opportunity are perfectly to align with. Thus, the result is to increase the data protection so that user will happy to use. Next, the strength is integration with websites and applications, while the opportunity is increasing number of people using Facebook through mobile devices. Thus, the outcome for SO is to keep promoting the user to link their account with their mobile devices. The next strategy is Weakness Opportunities or WO strategy. This strategy is to improve internal weakness by taking advantage of external opportunities. The weakness of Facebook is weak protection of users' information and the opportunity is investment in data protection and users' privacy protection. Thus, it creates the WO by tightening the data protection and users' privacy protection. We move on to the next strategy which is Strength Threat Strategy or ST Strategy. This strategy uses a firm's strengths to avoid or reduce the impact of external threats. As for the strength of Facebook is understanding of users' needs and behaviors, while the trend is the limitation of age to use Facebook. Thus, the strategy that can be implemented in this strategy is there should be a notice of monitoring by the adult if the user is under age. Thus, it meets the user needs. The next strategy is Weakness Threat Strategy or WT Strategy. This strategy is a defensive tactic to reduce internal weakness and avoid external threats. Firstly, identify the weakness. Later, identify the suitable threat in order to create the strategy. The weakness is lack of website customization and the threat is investment in data protection and users' privacy protection. Thus, the strategy that can be implied is always keep enhancing and innovating features to keep users coming back to the website. Next, the weakness is lack of website customization and the threat is weak business model. Thus, the strategy is to increase opportunities to customize pages without ruining design. Lastly, combine the weakness and threat in order to create a strategy. The weakness are the attitude towards users' privacy and weak protection of users' information, while the threats are leak of business information in organization and weak business model. Thus, the strategy is increase the security of users' privacy and information. Other metrics in this stage is the strategic position and action evaluation metrics or space metrics. Based on figure 1, space metrics for quadrant framework indicates whether aggressive, conservative, defensive or competitive strategies are most appropriate for a given organization. Its axes represent two internal dimensions which are financial strength and competitive advantage and other two external dimensions are environmental stability and industry strength. The first dimension in this stage is financial position. The financial position for Facebook received an average rating of 5 out of a feasible 7, with 7 becoming the optimal score and 1 being one of the worst possible score. According to income statement, the firm's net income more than doubled in 2014. The company's goodwill more than doubled, partly because Facebook in 2014 acquired the messaging service WhatsApp for $19 billion. Facebook is likely to have better financial ratios. The economy, no doubt, is a major reason the company has been financially underperforming over the past few years, but sufficient strategic planning should allow us to minimize such threats. The next dimension is competitive position. Facebook competitive position is no less than stellar. The company scored an average score of negative 1.33 out of 7 with 1 being the best score possible and 7 being the worst score possible. Facebook's wide following is its main competitive advantage, which it is commonly referred to as the network effect in business and economics. 
Much of the value comes from the availability of other people with similar interests that you may want to market to or interact with professionally or personally. The score of Facebook is an almost perfect score in the competitive position test. We move on to the external dimension in this matrix, which the first one is stability position. The Facebook stability position as well as its financial position is middle of the road. The company achieved a high score when focusing on the entry barriers associated with potential competitors but generated a low score when accessing such a high risk industry's risk. The saturation of the stability status score is anticipated when the reality that fresh and productive content is produced on a regular basis but is priced at industry levels. The Facebook finally scored an average score of negative 3.33 out of 7 with 1 being the best score possible and 7 being the worst score possible. The next external dimension is industry position. The industry position for Facebook mirrors its competitive position in that it reflects a high score. The company earns high scores for the reusing of its past portfolio and the fact that the ease of entry into the entertainment industry is difficult to say the least. When one considers the fact that the company's leverage position has increased in the last year, a great score is both what is deserved and what was given. In the end, the Facebook scored an average rating of 4.33 out of 7, with 7 being the best possible score and 1 being the worst possible score. Based on the graph 1, the market penetration is aggressive profile where a financially strong firm that has achieved major competitive advantages in a growing and stable industry. The next matrix in this stage is the Boston Consulting Group matrix or BCG matrix. The BCG matrix helps multi-divisional firms formulate strategies. It graphically portrays differences among divisions in terms of relative market share position and industry growth rate. Based on each division's respective XY coordinate, each segment can be properly positioned in a BCG matrix. Divisions located in quadrant 1, upper right, of the BCG matrix are called question marks. Those located in quadrant 2, upper left, are called stars. Those located in quadrant 3, lower left, are called cash cows. And those divisions located in quadrant 4, lower right, are called dogs. The basic BCG matrix appears in figure 2. Each circle represents a separate division. The size of the circle corresponds to the proportion of corporate revenue generated by that business unit and the pie slice indicates the proportion of corporate profits generated by that division. The major benefit of the BCG matrix is that it draws attention to the cash flow, investment characteristics and needs of an organization's various divisions. The divisions of many firms evolve over time which dogs become question marks, question marks become stars, Stars become cash cows and cash cows become dogs in an ongoing counterclockwise motion. Less frequently, stars become question marks, question marks become dogs, dogs become cash cows and cash cows become stars in a clockwise motion. In some organizations, no cyclical motion is apparent. Over time, organizations should strive to achieve a portfolio of divisions that are stars. The first quadrant is question marks. The divisions in quadrant 1, upper right have a low relative market share position yet they compete in a high growth industry. Generally, these firms' cash needs are high and their cash generation is low. These businesses are called question marks because the organization must decide whether to strengthen them by pursuing an intensive strategy or to sell them. For example, Facebook and direct advertising are the company's question mark as both fail to meet financial goals. People are now using more than conventional digital technology and willing to be more aware of things through digital media and use ad blog. For its potential growth and expansion, 
Facebook needs to consider this point. The second quadrant is tasks. Divisions in quadrant 2 represent the organization's best long-run opportunities for growth and profitability and are therefore called stars. Divisions with a high relative market share and a high industry growth rate should receive substantial investment to maintain or strengthen their dominant positions. Forward, backward and horizontal integration, market penetration, market development and product development are appropriate strategies for these divisions to consider. For instance, the Facebook advertisement. The profit earned by advertisement is very high, which helps them to expand further and provide consumers with new and enhanced services. The third quadrant is cash cows. Divisions in quadrant 3 have a high relative market share position but compete in a low growth industry. It is known as cash cows because they generate cash in excess of their needs. They are often milk. Many of today's cash cows were yesterday's stars. Cash cows divisions should be managed to maintain their strong position for as long as possible. Product development or diversification may be attractive strategies for strong cash cows. However, as a cash cow division becomes weak, retrenchment or diversity can become more appropriate. For instance, Facebook advertisement and payment and other fees are in this group. Due to the increase in its revenue each year, these are known as cash cows but there are no such changes made in the payment and other fees. These have long been operating on the market, thereby helping the company to create a strong brand image and market presence. The fourth quadrant is DOCS. Divisions in Quadrant 4 have a low relative market share position and compete in a slow or no market growth industry. They are DOCS in the firm's portfolio. Because of their weak internal and external position, these businesses are often liquidated divested or trimmed down through retrenchment. When a division first becomes a dog, retrenchment can be the best strategy to pursue because many dogs have bounced back after strenuous asset and cost reduction to become viable and profitable divisions. Internal external metrics also known IE metrics. IE metrics positions and organizations various division or segment in a 9-cell display. The IE matrix is similar to the BCG matrix in that both those involve plotting a firm's division in a semantic diagram. This is why they are both called for portfolio matrix. Also in both the BCG and IE matrix, the size of each circle represents the percentage of sales contribution of each division and pie slice reveal the percentage of profit contribution of each division but there are four differences between bcg matrix and ia matrix first the x and y axis are different second the ia matrix requires more information about the division than does the bcg matrix third the strategic implication of each matrix are different and last but not least the IE matrix has nine quadrants versus four in the BCG matrix. The IE matrix is based on two key dimensions, which are the internal factor evaluation IFE total weighted scores on the X axis and the external factor evaluation EFE total weighted scores on the Y axis. Recall that each division of an organization should construct an IFE matrix and EFE matrix for its part of the organization. On the X axis of IE matrix, IFE total weighted scores of 1.0 to 1.99 represents a weak internal position. A score of 2.0 to 2.99 is considered average and a score of 3.0 to 4.0 is strong. Similarly to the Y axis, an EFE total weighted scores of 1.0 to 1.99 is considered low. A score of 2.0 to 2.99 is medium. 
and a score of 3.0 to 4.0 is high. Circles representing division are positioned in an IE metric based on their X, Y coordinate. Despite having 9 cells or quadrants, the IE matrix has three major regions that have different strategy implication. Region 1, the prescription for division that fall into cells 2, 3 and 6 can be described as grow and build. Intensive, which is market penetration, market development and product development or integrative, backward integration, forward integration and horizontal integration strategies can be most appropriate for this division this is the best region for division given their high ife and efe scores successful organizations are able to achieve a portfolio of business position in region one region two the prescription for divisions that fall into cells one five and nine can be described as hold and maintain strategies. Market penetration and product development are two commonly employed strategies for this type of division. Region 3. The prescription for division that falls into cells 4, 7 and 8 can be described as harvest or diverse, which means that the organization is should be out of the market before suffer any greater losses. Based on the weighted scores from EFE matrix and IFE matrix that we have been analyzed earlier, we are able to identify in what region that this organization falls in. The EFE is 3.19 while the IFE is 3.21. So the organization is in the first region which is grow and build. The organization can expand their market and can make added variety services in their business activities it also shows that how the stakeholder able to accept and use the services provided well and being as one of the best platform for them to use grand strategy matrix in addition to the SWOT metric space matrix bcg matrix and ie matrix the grand strategy matrix has become a popular tool for formulating alternative strategies. All organizations can be positioned in one of the grand strategy metrics for strategy quadrants. A firm's division like WISE could be positioned as in the illustration, the grand strategy metric is based on two evaluative dimensions which are competitive position on the x-axis and the market growth on the y axis firms located in quadrant one of the grand strategy matrix are in excellent strategic position for this company continued concentration on current market is an appropriate strategy it is unwise for a quadrant one firm to shift notably from its established competitive advantage when a quadrant one organization has excessive sources the backward, forward or horizontal integration may be effective strategies. When a quadrant one firm is too heavily committed to a single product, then related diversification may reduce the risk associated with a narrow product line. Quadrant one firms can be afford to take advantage of external opportunities in several areas. They can take risk aggressively when necessary. Firms position in quadrant to need to evaluate their present approach to the marketplace seriously. Although their industry is growing, they are unable to compete effectively. They need to determine why the firm's current approach is ineffective and how the company can be best changed to improve its competitiveness. Because Quadrant 2 organizations are in a rapid market growth industry, an intensive strategy is usually the first option that should be considered. However, if the firm is lacking a distinctive competence or competitive advantage, 
then horizontal integration is often a desirable alternative. As a last resort, the divestiture or lidication should be considered. Divestiture can be provide can provide funds needed to acquire other businesses or buy back shares of stock. Quadrant three organizations compete in slow growth industries and have weak competitive positions. This firm must make some drastic changes quickly to avoid further decline and possible liquidation. Extensive cost and asset reduction should be pursued first. An alternative strategy is to shift resources away from the current business to different areas. If all else fails, the final options for quadrant 3 businesses are divestiture or liquidation. Finally, quadrant 4 businesses have a strong competitive position but are in slow growth industry. These firms have the strength to launch diversified programs into more promising growth areas. Quadrant 4 businesses have characteristically have high cash flow levels and limited internal growth needs and often can pursue related or unrelated diversification successfully. Quadrant 4 firms also may pursue joint ventures. Even with the grand strategy matrix, be certain that you always, whenever possible, state your alternative strategies in specific, actionable, and divisional terms to the extent possible. When you know the particular firm, such as strategic management case analysis, avoid using terms such as divestiture, for example. Rather, specify the exact division to be sold. As Facebook, it can be considered be positioned in quadrant 1 since the performance of the organization is at the peak. Even though Facebook have competitor but the number is still low and the preferences or users of Facebook is still loyal to it, it still can develop suitable services that fulfill the needs of the stakeholders. It also fulfills the mission statement which is to give people the power to share and make the world more open and connected. Currently, people use Facebook not only as a platform to socialize but also as a business hub, data sharing and many more. They have fully utilized the platform given in order to fulfill their needs. Other than ranking strategies to achieve the prioritized list, there is only one analytical technique in the literature design to determine the relative attractiveness of feasible alternative actions, which is the Quantitative Strategic Planning Matrix or QSPM. The QSPM matrix comprise of stage 3 of the strategy formulation analytical framework objectively indicates which alternative strategies are best. The QSPM uses input from stage 1 analysis and matching results from stage 2 analysis to decide objectively among alternative strategies. To implement this strategy, Facebook needs to follow several steps in QSPM. The first one is the overall strategic management analysis is used to identify key strategic factors. This can be done using the IFE and EFE metrics. The second step is formulation of the type of the strategy we would like to pursue. This can be done using the SWOT analysis, space matrix analysis, BCG matrix model, or the IE matrix model. The third step is by examining the stage 2 matrices and identify alternative strategies that the organization should consider implementing. Each key external and internal factor should have some weight in the overall scheme. This weights from the IFE and EFE matrices as well. Step 4 is to determine the attractiveness cost. It shows how each factor is important or attractive to each alternative strategy. Attractiveness costs are determined by examining each key external and internal factor separately. The range for AS is 1 equals to not attractive, 
2 equals to somewhat attractive, 3 equals to reasonably attractive and 4 equals to highly attractive. The fifth step is to compute the total attractiveness cost. Total attractiveness costs are defined as the product of multiplying the weights in step 3 by the attractiveness cost in step 4 in each row. The TAS indicate the relative attractiveness of each alternative strategy considering only the impact of the adjacent external and internal critical success factor. The higher the TAS, the more attractive the strategic alternative. The last step is to calculate the sum total attractiveness cost by adding all total attractiveness cost in each strategy column of the QSPM. In each set of alternatives, the sum total attractiveness cost reveals which strategy is most attractive. Based on the table, two alternative strategies which are creating a new product and merging with other social media are being considered. The sum total of attractiveness cost of 3.42 versus 4.63 indicates Facebook should merge with other social media to strengthen their strategic planning in the company. This strategy can be called as horizontal integration. This process can lead to monopoly if a company captures the vast majority of the market for that product or services. It is recommended for Facebook to tighten their security protocols in order to prevent any identity theft. Facebook should come up with a system that could trace any person who are trying to steal other users' personal identity. If Facebook is not trying to prevent this issue, the users could assume that Facebook is not a safe place to socialize. On the other hand, in order to raise the revenue, Facebook should find another sources of income other than advertising. Facebook could use any alternatives such as collaborating with other social media such as YouTube or LinkedIn. Organizational culture includes the set of shared values, beliefs, attitudes, customs, norms that describe a firm. For these reasons, it is beneficial to view strategy analysis and choice from a cultural perspective because success often rests on the degree of support that strategies receive from a firm's culture. Google and Facebook are becoming closer friends. Both companies want more people online, searching around and clicking on ads. The app is customized for each country and telecom operator in order to attract new users.